Welcome ladies and gentlemen. I thought this was a really interesting article on The Hollywood Reporter. Media crisis point. It's losing relevance and scorned in Trump era. A reboot maybe next. Now, this actually isn't really linked to Trump. Mainstream media is finally realising that they are irrelevant. But it is a byproduct, or at least Trump has become the catalyst which has sped up the snowball effect of them realising just how irrelevant they are. I thought this was fascinating. Um, I've read I've read through this a few times and I'm really like, wow. It Seemingly mainstream media understands now that they are a dying breed. Now, I don't think that's necessarily going to change anything. In fact, what we have seen from mainstream media, their talking points, at least publicly, has been you must censor all alternative media, censor social uh, social media, censor X, censor all of these podcasts. We can be the only voice that is out there. Right. So you, you, you kind of understand it, but the way to combat it is to not improve, it's to double down. Amazing. So, like I said, it's not actually about Trump. This isn't about Trump. But it is off the back end of his victory, his win, that they have started to question uh, their relevancy. So I thought we'd take a look because this is genuinely actually really interesting. Anyone that watches this channel will be well aware that old media is dead. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. And they're finally accepting it. So this is not a revelation to anyone else, generally speaking, but to watch them sort of scrabble in the dark. You know, and sort of come to terms with it is just, it's pure comedy, to be honest. So hit subscribe if you're new here, guys, and you enjoy videos such as this. And please do support me further via my Patreon, because again, as this article points out, is that old media is dead. But mark my words, they are going to be censor censoring new media, such as me, and I will get demonetized. So, link in the description box to my Patreon. Support me there. Anyway, again, this is on The Hollywood Reporter, so mainstream media outlet. And it says, for, uh, former President Trump's decisive victory Tuesday will cause media outlets, particularly those that fashion themselves as non-partisan, to rethink their strategies. They should have been doing this anyway, because they've been long dead. So former President Trump's decisive victory Tuesday led to a shockwave that was felt in newsrooms across Washington, D.C. and New York. Everyone knew the polls were close and that a Trump win was a strong possibility but the scale of Trump's win left one senior producer at a broadcast network stunned. We are questioning our relevance right now. Uh, okay. Good. It was a sentiment shared by former uh, Senator Claire McCaskill, who lamented on MSNBC's Morning Joe, I think we have to acknowledge that Donald Trump knows our country better than we do. That's because you're out of touch. You're incredibly out of touch, but it's not that you know, someone's got the upper hand on you, like, you are just degenerate scum. No one, no one wants to listen to you guys anymore. You're out of touch because you live in your own bubble. Because you hire people based on them having the same belief system as you do. And they're also out of touch. So it's this constant cycle, just out of touch morons, trying to preach to people. Uh, indeed, there are... Uh, blaring red warning signs for traditional media everywhere you look. Ratings for the broadcast and cable news channels saw steep declines in ratings from Nielsen. Uh, so it showed an average of 42.3 million people down from nearly 57 million four years ago. That's quite a big drop off. Uh, with the lowest ratings in decades. So this is the steepest drop uh, felt at CNN, which saw its numbers fall below MSNBC for the first election night since that channel launched nearly three decades ago. That's pretty bad, to be honest. Um, and then there's loads of other stuff, loads of people just watching stuff on X, Roku, people are watching YouTubers talk about it all. Meanwhile, emergent platforms and programs outside of the traditional media, you mean old media, thrived. Some for Harris, her interview on Alex Cooper's Call Her Daddy generated millions of views and listens, but it was a strategy that Trump went all in on. And during his victory speech, his friend and UFC CEO Dana White used the opportunity to call out some of those personalities. And this is true. Th this is someone that does understand that new media is the future. You know, media that is not controlled by 
weird entities that you know have vested interest and people buy into a personality they they buy into the presenter not the entity behind the presenter right, Tucker Carlson love him or hate him is the best example of that someone leaving old media and then you know being a brand in and unto himself and catapulting him even further to success it's staggering how successful he is now by comparison to how he was he was successful anyway but holy shit how much he is now so yeah dana white said i want to thank some people real quick i want to thank the nelk boys aiden ross theo von bussin with the boys and last but not least the mighty and powerful joe rogan it's a group of people who are not uniformly fans of trump rogan did not endorse them until monday united by factors that are a little harder to square Steve Krakawa, a media contributor to News Nation, the columnist for The Hill, uh, who also works as Megyn Kelly's executive producer for Sirius XM, says that things like the MAHA movement, Make America Healthy Again, may be worth exploring for a dejected media. Yeah, people don't want to be fat and disgusting and gross and unhealthy all the time, pumped full of drugs, funnily enough. Uh, show some interest in it. Cover it critically. But take it seriously, because clearly that point of view has resonated with people that are not typically Trump fans. Yeah, who'd have thought it? On Tuesday night, Fox News host Sean Hannity declared legacy media to be dead once it became clear that Trump was on pace to win. The decline of its influence has been evident for years. This is proof of it. It's not necessarily its influence. Well, I mean, it is and it isn't, right? Like, old media, legacy media, is not dead because its influence is dying. It, it's, it's dead because it fundamentally rejects and hates what the normal person believes right and we've got it here in the uk there's this famous quote-unquote uh, guy in the uk called james o'brien who works for lbc who is just the biggest pile of detritus you've ever heard in your life and he went on a rant recently after trump won saying that america has universally rejected uh sort of social democratic norms and went on and said, oh, they, they, they're, they're only interested in this, this, and this, and this. And I responded to him on Twitter and I said, yeah, shock horror. You know, people are, more, are less interested in virtue signaling. Um, I'm far more interested in putting, you know, food in their bellies. Like, yeah, obviously. People don't, people don't care about virtue signaling at all when it comes at the behest of their day-to-day -day life. They're not interested in that. They don't give a shit about it. But that's a prime example of legacy media in general. Legacy media in general are just a bunch of virtue signaling tool bags. And they don't understand the strife of the average working American or the average working Brit, just the average working person. They don't understand it. They live in their bubble. Uh, but they're fully intent on going all in on virtue signaling. They really want virtue signaling. Uh, and that's what's killed it. People don't want to do that. People don't care. People are more than happy to help people out when the going's good. But when the going's tough, and they see their money going out the door to help other people. No, they're not happy about it. Especially when those people have no right to their money. And their help. Illegal immigrants. Anyway. Um, so there was a little bit further said. Um, so said further. Fox, of course, is not immune to the business challenges facing the rest of TV news. So the problems facing many of its competitors with differing views or approaches will still need to be navigated by the Murdoch-controlled outlet. Exactly. Controlled. But there is no doubt that a strategy that involved effectively ignoring the mainstream media seems to have worked and the celebrity endorsement seems to have had no impact either. Yeah, shock horror. No one gives a shit what dumbass celebrities think. Again, people who look down their nose at you and sneer. No one's interested in what they've got to say anymore. The age of the celebrity is dead. Uh, that a president-elect could win so overwhelmingly in popular vote plus electoral college while ignoring the New York Times, Washington Post, NPR, CBS News, NBC News and CNN while spending hours with Joe Rogan should be a moment of self-reflection, a self-reflective reckoning for mainstream media, wrote Michael Sokoklo, so a former broadcast journalist who now teaches at the University of Maine. Yeah. Yeah, should. Uh, indeed, inside the halls of media power, that reckoning has already taken place, with executives, editors, on-air talent and producers wondering what the next four years will bring. Whilst Trump himself has long been an avid fan of traditional media, Rupert Murdoch's New York Post, which endorsed him, has been a staple. His campaign increasingly turned away from even friendly traditional outlets in favour of pairing the mogul with influencers. Yeah, because they actually have an, like, they actually have, they have an opinion. 
uh, and a, a base of supporters that actually like them. So while there is plenty of hyperbole to be found, um, which is true, blah, 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 there are real lessons to be gleaned. Some outlets will lean into the resistance mindset that generated big ratings and major subscriber gains in 2016 to 2010, but that all died after 2020, so that's stupid. But the election results suggest that the market for that type of programming or content has a natural limit. You won't get anywhere with that anymore. Attention paid to the news may rise. The first Trump administration sure no shortage of bombshell developments, controversies and sharp rhetoric spurred by the president's Twitter bully pulpit. But it's unclear this time whether that attention will result in a rise of readership, viewership or subscribers for traditional outlets or if a new class of influencers will reap the benefits with room for only so many. Make no, make no mistake, ladies and gents, they're going to control YouTube. They're going to control everything. They're, and they're really going to try and control Twitter. They're really going to go in on this. They're really desperately going to try and control it. And if they can't control it by laws, they're going to control it by the... the, 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 the like YouTube, for instance, themselves self-censoring. Uh, you know, individuals that talk about things in a positive fashion. They will do it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fascinating. You know, there's consultants, a consultant for media growth partners suggest that media outlets should consider making strategic moves to build trust and relevance. No, you're, you're all dead. They even want to try and get um, partnered with creators, YouTubers, things like that. Which is just, yeah, that's not going to happen either. So basically, they know that they're screwed. There's a big question mark in my mind of whether a lot of news organizations think that the best thing to do is to just double and triple down on political coverage as the thing that will drive the most engagement and the most reach. And I think that the answer to that is that it might uh, might for a while because I think there will be a bit of a Trump bump. Uh, I think long term, this different product approach, different kind of verticalization approach is probably going to be what you'll see from everybody because they want to cover their bets a little bit. I think that there was already an idea that you need to build or just uh, not just coverage strategy, but a product strategy to capture and keep specific audiences. People are done with legacy media. They are. They're just done with them. They really are. So, I, I mean, I think that they know their time's up, but I just thought it was fascinating. This whole article, you know, media crisis, like. They know that they've just been nuked. And it's not nuked by Trump. Like, Trump is just the catalyst by which they have, 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 have come to the conclusion that they are done. But they've been done for years. Years. So what do you guys think of this? Let me know down below. I'd genuinely be interested to hear your thoughts. And again, if you enjoy people like me, it doesn't have to just be me, but if you enjoy people like me, do consider supporting them further via however they want support. Merch patreon things like that i've got a patreon link down below it would mean a lot if you could help out there because mark my words they're going to start censoring people so thank you so much take care bye bye now <laughs>